something that we don't get to explore a lot at Milken, which is usually so focused on credit markets. Um, the competitive landscape for supermarkets in the U.S. has certainly been one that's challenging, and it's changed a little bit this morning with Sainsbury buying or announcing that it's buying Walmart as the chain in the U.K. What does a Walmart that is that has a smaller international footprint and a sharper focus on its home market mean for Kroger? Well, when you talked about those food overall, grocery stores, I mean, it continually changes. I mean, that change is just part of who we are. The only thing that stays consistent is people keep eating, but the way they eat will constantly change. So people today are much more interested in being inspired by food mm -hmm. and food that's healthy for them, but based on their terms. So when you look at uh, a, a Walmart as a great competitor, has been for a long time and will continue to be. And I think uh, Sainsbury will do a great job with the as, as to assets as well. But you know, for us, we're really focused on what the customer wants and needs are, and then how do we deliver against those needs. Does the customer want, does the customer, are the customer's needs not fulfilled by Walmart, whereas they are fulfilled by, by what you offer? How, how does what you offer differ from what Walmart offers? Yeah, for us, we're really, over 9 million people a day come into our stores. So we're really focused on those 9 million customers. And clearly they want uh, somebody more natural and organics. So that's a product that's been uh, growing for us for several years. If you look at our own brand on Simple Truth, uh, five years ago we introduced it and it's over a two billion dollar category today. Uh, we do, everything we do, we personalize it for that shopper individually, uh, both from an offer standpoint and for an inspiration standpoint for meals. So it's not so much uh, what somebody else does, it's completely focused on that customer and that household and how do we better serve their needs and their value, for their values, not values in terms of ethics, but a value equation for them. Right. Well, how does getting bigger help you in that task? Because not so long ago, there were reports that were denied, of course, of Kroger making a bid for Target. Talk us through the mechanics and the benefits of bulking up, because there are certainly scale benefits, but does it solve the, the fundamental problem of, of being cheaper, of providing that value? Yeah, for us, on any type of merger that we look at doing, we're uh, completely focused on how do we have where the two companies together creates capabilities that neither one of us would have independent of each other. Uh, to me, uh, we're big enough at 120 plus billion that scale isn't really what we need for merging with somebody. Okay, so it has to be strategic as well. I know that uh, you have an arrangement with uh, Instacart. Um, we know that Amazon as well is also forcing everyone to invest in technology. So my question to you is, do you need to build out your own delivery network or can you stay put with a third service network like Instacart um, with whom you recently expanded your partnership? If for us, everything that we find, the customer really wants to engage us with us multiple ways. So physically in the store, online in terms of pickup and delivery. And the customer, when they start going online, they still physically go into the store. Mm. So everything that we find, the customer wants to do it on their terms, not our terms. Right, but do you want to own those terms? Is there a risk to outsourcing the delivery business as opposed to building it out on your own? And I ask this because Toys R Us, for instance, uh, outsourced its, its e-commerce business to Amazon and never really recovered from that. Yeah, for us, we decide you know, when do we do it ourselves and when do we have a third party do it. We keep the relationship with the customer customer, and that's really the key, is maintaining that relationship with the customer. Now, does Kroger need to make an e-commerce acquisition at this moment? Bloomberg reported in March that Boxed rejected your $400 million offer. Is this something that's still on the table that you're still thinking around? It, what we tell our investors is you should assume that anybody that can add capabilities to accelerate where we're going, uh, it's, it's partnerships, mergers, anything at all that we would be talking to. So I never talk about specific ones, but I do tell our investors, you know where we're trying to go in terms of serving the customer on their terms. Mm -hmm. So when we are looking at serving the customer on their terms, anybody that can help accelerate that journey, uh, we're looking at partnering with them in multiple different ways. And it's not just physically merging the companies, but sometimes it's a relationship like the Instacart relationship. Okay, so you're open to all and any conversations. Oh, we always have been. Got it. We're at Milken, so we do need to address some of the macro uh, issues out here. Inflation, certainly one thing that you're looking at. Where specifically are you seeing a pickup in costs? Is it in labor or is it in product costs? Uh, for instance, fresh produce or consumer packaged goods? Yeah, if you look at uh, wage inflation, certainly on entry level wages, we've accelerated our investment 
announcements from Restock Kroger uh, to accelerate pay raises, especially for beginning associates. And then we also use some of the tax savings to enhance our tuition reimbursement program. Because what we find is people come for a job, but they make it a career. Uh, you also will always work on process changes to offset some of those wage increases, and that's something that the grocery business has been doing for the last 50 years and always will be. When you, your one other question was like on produce. Produce will be, inflation will be driven by the growing season. So you'll end up having a tremendous amount of inflation if, if you have uh, drought. Uh, in the future, when you have the right amount of rain and things, then you'll have plenty of produce. So if you look at over the last 10 or 15 years, it looks like a flat line. Or trade disputes also. Uh, eventually, yes. <laughs> I mean, does that factor into your thinking right now? How much is that an issue for you? Well, for us, the things that factor in our uh, decisions is if we were at a competitive disadvantage. So from a trade perspective, uh, our competitors are going to have to deal with the same thing we would. So, you know, we leave it up to the government officials because they have a lot more uh, knowledge than what we would. How much tolerance is there for uh, among customers for higher prices? I mean, how concerned are you that you're not able to raise prices in this competitive environment? Well, the cu customer always wants a value. And, you know, the, the, how much value do they get versus the price of the product? So if you think about something that adds a lot of convenience or an incredible taste, uh, you know, I think about cheese. Uh, when you can go to Murray's Cheese and get an incredibly uh, something right from the farm where it's just a delicious taste, you know, somebody's more focused on the taste of that versus trying to find a cheese that's, you know, $2 a pound because mm. of the qualities in it. And they know that it's some farmer that's raised it. Uh, the cows or the goats or the sheep and the love they put into that product. Yeah, you're referring to the authenticity. A quick final question for you, Rod. Uh, what's the most interesting conversation you've had on the sidelines here at Milken? Well, you know, Milken to me is just incredibly fascinating on the diversity of people and how everybody is an expert. And I think there's a lot of people that we can partner with from a collaboration standpoint to help America eat healthier. Mm -hmm. uh, on their terms, and I've met several people that I think can accelerate that journey.